Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Underrail, shall we? So, we are at the Institute of Chort, which is also the university. I don't know how I thought that those were separate entities, but hey. That's Underrail, baby. And now we need to get in. And so, you know, I could just walk in and talk to um, Efrator Denzil, cool dude. Or I could talk to these other people. Let's just talk to everybody else first. Uh, this is Kale. You see this person nonchalantly watching other people in the courtyard. He has a self-satisfied smile on his face while eyeing everyone around him, and he also seems to hold his chin steadily elevated as if posing for a sculptor to transfer it onto an elaborate bust. Interestingly, he seems astounded when you come near him and attempt to start a conversation. You, your approach is met with a puzzled gawk, followed by him looking down at his body for some, to you, unknown reason. He then lifts his head up and speaks to you. You, you can see me? Um, yep, you seem pretty visible to me. Or I could say, no, I can't, what's going on, where are you? Yep, he ponders the situation for a moment. The only reasonable explanation for you being able to see me must be that you possess some special gift, some special power, mortal. Yes, yes, that must be it. Um, oh, that's good to know. Who are you anyway? I'm Kale, the Lord of Invisibility. I'm the only one who has truly mastered the art of being in a state of gone, complete invisibility to the naked eye. Gone is the proper term for such a state, and it was I who came up with it. Um, that sounds pretty cool. Of course, I could see how such divine things can impress a mortal being such as yourself. Yes, what would... Would you be so kind as to tell me your name? I'm just giving out my name. It's me, Dr. Incompetent. A mortal name indeed. Well, yeah, you're right about that. Let's talk about this gift of yours, shall we? Let's. Tell me of this gift. When did you first realize you were able to see invisible people? Um, if you can see someone, then he's not invisible. You don't seem to understand the question. Uh, working with mortals is painful. Let's try it like this. I am invisible. You can see me. Therefore, since common mortals can't see me, but you can, you must have some special ability which allows you to do so. That is the only logical conclusion, and if you... He stops speaking. As his eyes shift away from you, he begins scratching his beard. Soon after, he points his finger at you and speaks. I understand now why you're so confused. Ha! You haven't had the opportunity to see an invisible person because there wasn't an invisible person to see. Um, I think I'm starting to lose you. You are a mortal, so it's not surprising to me. Now, where was I? You cannot answer my question about first noticing you had a gift which allows you to see invisible people because you never had the opportunity to see an invisible person. This is kind of like some M. Night Shyamalan mumbo-jumbo here. I, Kale, the Lord of Invisibility, am the first invisible person you were able to see, and that is why the existence of your gift seems to perplex you so much. For one to know if he's capable of seeing invisible people, he must first see someone who is invisible so that his mind can confirm that he had seen someone invisible, but since he could never see anyone invisible because there weren't... there wasn't anyone invisible to see... I wish I could just grab this guy by the throat and stop him from talking and then explain to him, I've seen things that he can never even imagine. I've seen invisible people. I've seen people fade into invisibility. I've seen the shadow lift. I've seen the chief of the serpentine people. I've seen ghosts. I've seen apparitions. I've seen... I've walked through portals that open the fabric of time and space. I, I don't... But, no, I'll just be polite and listen to this guy and pretend that uh, his delusions are sensical. Okay, that still doesn't answer how you're able to see me, or the origin of your gift. Well, since you seem to have no freaking clue what I'm even talking about, I suppose you won't be of much help, so we better leave it at that. So I'll just disregard you as an anomaly and stop concerning myself with it. Um, I think it's best if we discuss something else. Um, what do you know about the Chortists? Well, they're mortals, which usually aren't worth my time. They seem very religious. They praise this chort, and that's all I know. Now, once I show them what I am capable of, 
Invisibility? Well, of course. Um, so what is he here for, then? He wants to get in. These are just all... Like, does this place just attract mentally unstable individuals? I mean, you know, we could argue that the people inside and wearing robes and carrying machine guns are also mentally unstable, and I think you'd have a pretty good point, but this guy seems exceptional. Um, did you see any of them carrying a strange object? I don't remember seeing anything you describe. To be honest, most of the time I don't concern myself with mortal affairs. It's beneath me. Good. Good, Kale. Um, does that mean you're immortal? But of course, I am special. Do you think this ability was bestowed upon me? Just wasted once. I, Kale, the Lord of Invisibility... Be perishes? No, that's not how things work, mortal, and I don't expect you to understand. How can you be so sure? He rolls his eyes. You and your mortal questions. How are you so sure? I'm sure because what I possess should not be possessed by a mortal man, and if it is not for mortal men, then I'm not mortal. Do you understand? But why exactly shouldn't a mortal man have the power to be invisible? Because mortal people are regular people, common, and common men cannot enter the state of God. I, Kale, the Lord of Invisibility, am special. Okay, good. Good. Um, thanks, buddy. And let's see, who are you? You're Maurice? This corner is so fabulous. Check it. It looks pretty good, Maurice. Alright, so we found Daphne, who actually seems reasonable. Scientist, trying to get in. Frowning man. Angry. What? Just says what? And Kale. With these kinds of encounters... Uh, I'm just gonna walk up and talk to, um, Denzil here. And see, see how we're doing. The man seems somewhat uneasy as you come near him. Even though you're unable to see his face, what you are able to notice that is how his body language expresses his apprehension. He is unable to stand completely still. He either taps his foot or crosses and uncrosses his arms, or nervously looks all around him. When you near him, you notice a symbol on his uniform. A circular eye with two tentacles sprouting from it, similar to the symbol on the large doors behind him. Soon he speaks with a voice that sounds tense and hasty in one moment and cold on the other. Everything in this, I mean, it's all goes back to this kind of Cthulhu business. Everything is tentacles. Shadowleth, tentacles, short, tentacles, relationship, I don't know. It's all tentacles. Um, who are you? Are you one of the shortests? I am... Ephrator Denzil, and yes, I'm a Chortus. In case you haven't noticed, you are standing at the entrance of the Institute to Chort, and all these rogue guards, Rassifors, are as members as well. We are here to preserve safety of the Institute, so be very careful of your actions during your time here. You got your answer, now leave me alone. I'd like to become a member. I'm sorry, but we can't accept new members at this time. We are full, so to say, and... As you can see, if you were to look around you, all these people are waiting to join, but alas, as I've already mentioned, we cannot accept new members. Still, that doesn't stop them from waiting, which is to be respected. Chort might reward their wait, but not at this time, unfortunately. Um, I don't think you understand. I really want to join. Yes? Um, but I really want to join. Alright, um... What is the matter with you? Are your ears vestigial? It's like you can't hear me. We do not accept new members. Now buzz off. Um. Buzz off? Is that your answer? I'm so disappointed. I never even suspected that a representative of such a grand and enchanting organization such as the Institute of Chort would say something so foul to me. I was willing to dedicate the rest of my days to Chortism and to happily spend those very days surrounded by men and women, brothers and sisters who are above all the low-life scumbags and inhabiting the rest of Underrail. Yeah, I'll say that. Magnificent Chort! You must be some inbred jerk who lost the ability to understand human language several generations ago. He makes a short pause to allow some of the steam to come out and prevent him from exploding. Look here, you don't want to be disturbing and afraid. I can order these guys to call you instantly and they wouldn't even flinch. 
Order them anything you want, but I'm standing my ground. I want to join the Institute, and I'm willing to do anything to achieve that goal. Something tells you that despite looking just angry on the outside, on the inside, he's probably turning into a ball of plasma, reaching temperatures high enough to ignite nuclear fusion. Suddenly, he cools down, and the tone of his voice becomes calmer, losing the red-hot rage. Anything, you say? Anything? Hmm, interesting. Well, there is an issue you could help us with. Finally, we're getting somewhere. We had an issue with a missing figurine, a very important metal figurine. It was stolen from us, and we need to get it back. Now, we aren't precisely sure who did it, but we suspect those devolved lunatic friends to be behind the theft. They taint everything, okay? The metal figurine depicts a man reaching for the surface. He points up. Up there. If you can find it, we might make a deal about you joining us, brother. Okay. Um... Where should I start looking for it? Well, our RAS4 scouts have learned some time ago that a large group of lunatics were seen in the vicinity of the Emporion shopping mall that's west of here. If the lunatics are the ones who took the figurine, that would be the best start. Um, what can you tell me about them? Culling material, no question about it. They are as mentally derailed as one can be and therefore extremely unpredictable. Their motives, patterns of thought, or anything about them is impossible to figure out. They're powerful psionics, mind you, and that's pretty much the only thing that we're sure about them. Why would they want that figurine? Oh, I don't know. I don't even think they know. They, that's all under um, the assumption that they're the ones who stole it. What's so important about it? I'm not at liberty to reveal that information to you. If you do manage to retrieve it, then you'll find out more. Um, I'm on the job. I'll bring it back. Do not speak to me unless you have... The figurine. To short good bah. Alright, he's an angry guy. Alright, so we gotta go cull some fun friendly lunatics. And we've been to this shopping mall. We know it well, in fact. It's on our map. This is it right here, the Emporium Shopping Mall. So might as well take it down. What I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to save it, and we're going to go for it. Now, when I look at my psionics, what do I have? I do have Frighten, but I don't know if I need Pseudo-Spatial Projection. I think I could probably do Neural Overload and Enrage uh, to have even more fun, but we'll just keep with this build for the moment. What am I equipped with? I have my headband on. Yeah, this stuff looks fine. Let me equip this spear instead, and let me save it. I only have three bandages, though. Let me see if there's a uh, teleport to the Institute. There it is. Sweet. I figured it would be close by. Yeah, tune myself. Great. All right, so now we've attuned ourselves. Now we have a teleport here. Let me go to my house. Uh, I'm gonna need to, I need to get more bandages and some stuff to take down these lunatics. I have two minutes. Probably won't make it in time, but luckily I have plenty of stuff. All right, um, go ahead and consumables. And yeah, let's just carry the bandages with us. And now I'm overloaded. So, how do we settle that problem? We just go into our gear and we start dumping stuff. I've got to have some things that uh, are just way too heavy. Yeah, bullets. Okay. Yep, now I'm good on weight. I had a ton of bullets. Flashbangs will be great for this situation. Alright, let's pretend like this is good. I'm going to save my brew. Okay. Take me to uh, University Station. Let's rock it. Alright, fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to heal myself. 
and I'm going to look at my inventory, and I'm going to take off some of these. So I think I'd rather have all grenades. I'm not going to use a taser. I'm going to go with uh, the frag grenades and flashbangs instead of these EMPs and plasmas, I think. This should be pretty good. Okay, let's roll. I hope that this will be a, a, an example of when I can really dominate. I've been to this shopping mall before. I've taken out lunatics before. Hopefully I'm strong enough now so where this isn't really that big of a deal. Emergency phone. Let's make a call. It doesn't take a keen eye to notice that this is quite old, considering its technological composition as well as its current condition. The relative proximity of the railroads and the phone station's overall design undoubtedly point to its purpose. They're used in situations which involved undesired circumstances when it comes to the functionality of railroad traffic. Sweet. Typically, these phones feature an interface which has six distinct buttons, each with a unique icon on them. The phone uses a coil cord and headphone itself and has no additional features other than a speaker and a receiver. Lastly, an exposed digital display port lies right on beneath a small metal door, both located under said buttons. The connector's pins are bulky, but few in number. You can make a call. Um, open the metal compartment. There's nothing inside. Make a call. Red cross. No response. Cancel the call. No response. Green shield. <laughs> they make different notes. I wonder if I if I oh wait. Um. Open the the compartment. Okay. I wonder if I like get the uh, the pattern right. If something appears there, like if there's a musical lock or something. Anyway. Let's go shopping. And we're going to stealth up. And let's have some fun. We need a figurine. Let's see if these people have it. Oh, here we go. Alright. I'm just going to go ahead and take this one out. Oh, that guy saw me. Uh-oh. It's on now. Okay, or it was on. Alright, good enough. Fair enough. Let's get into it. Alright. Hi, are you guys over there? I'm just going to go ahead and drop this um, right there. I did hit myself in case anyone was keeping track. That's embarrassing. But that's cryokinesis for you. Oh, that orb. So beautiful. Okay, good. They actually have good stuff for me. I mean, not all of it, but some of it's okay. Bandages, health hypos, psionics. Fantastic. You got money? No. God, no. No, they've got no cash. Oh, we have a tourist guide. Well, we actually can use that for one more experience. Fantastic. Who's over here? You guys in here? Uh, bad guys aren't in here. Fridge. All right, cash register. Now, this had money. So they maybe they were actually running this shop, like they were doing some trading. There's some food here. Ooh, nice. Nice. The assassin. These guys are actually going to be the only hard ones here, huh? Alright, well, I should probably stealth then. For the purposes of dealing with these guys. Better health item, anyway. I'll take it. I'm thrilled to receive it. Alright. Now well, let's just do some shopping. Let's be a capitalist. It's not what ended the world. I'm 
Okay. So there's a group over here. So they want... They told me they wanted this orb. And then this guy said he wanted a telekinetic punch. The lunatic barber. Man, maybe he could change your hair. That's cool. There's a jackhammer. We might need that in here. There might be a wall that we have to bust apart or something. Fine. I'll take all your stuff. All your restorative items. Ooh, you have some grenades. Good for you. Take that. Take that. Fantastic. All right, let me stealth up. Anybody over here? Oh, yeah. All right, we'll just go ahead and drop a, an orb on their fire. This seems to be the... Oh, no, it didn't work. All right, well, that's a shame. What's this guy gonna do? Ooh, ooh, he did, he hit me. Uh oh, it's hard to see him. Uh oh. Ooh, he resisted. He's gone. Good job, dude. That guy really stood in there. I like it. All right. You lunatics. Okay, I have to say, I am feeling pretty reasonable here. Like, these guys are definitely underneath my level. Now, inside the Institute, things might get crazy. Also, I might be doing this the wrong way. I might just want to go in the back door or not help these people out, keep the figurine for myself, all kinds of things. But for now, let's go. Okay, this is just a fun intermediary level as we climb the stairs and now we're on to another level who's up here anybody not that i see yet let's go ahead and take everything that they've got medical locker give me it all right whatever take it let's go over here this is a nice little balcony this could have been charming one day Oh, okay, so let me just kind of go over here. Now, I don't know if this bench is going to get in my way. It probably will, but let's just see. And that's a no. It did not get in my way. We're going to stealth up. We're going to save the game. We're going to just loot these guys. And we're just going to keep making our way through. Silently. You know, it's... I'm going to take all of that. It's great that these lunatics are able to work together. They're crazy, but they share a common goal. And so they don't attack each other. There's like some organization and loyalty amongst themselves. I mean, at least some of the time. We're looking for oddities or money. Oh, here's a coupon. Yes. It's going to take so much to even level us up at this point, but I want to try. Ooh, an old Metro ticket. Well, we're definitely getting the last of the oddities of that type, like, that we, that we could find, which is cool. All right, so let's see. There's a, unit, a lunatic chiller over here. Let's open this door, and here's a guy. I'm just going to... Um, oops, wrong button. Let's just telekinetic punch the dude, and we'll end combat. Look at this clothing store. Man. If only I could get some new duds. I'm going to uh, huff ether. I have so many inhalants. And I don't want to run out at, a, at an embarrassing moment. All right, we're going to go stealth. And let's just check this out. Cool. Sure. Take it all. Hmm, yeah, the balaclava. I love it. All right. Go over here. How many people are in this area? A couple. So this is actually going to be kind of hard because... Um... Oh, we actually didn't kill that guy in one shot. That's a problem. All right, let me just then stun this dude. I don't know if he's in it or not, but... Uh... And we're out of action points, so let's wait. 
you die to this, and then hopefully you die to this. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. But to do what you got. Oh, yeah. These lunatics are just full of stuff that's actually useful. It's so much better than fighting, like, crabs and stuff that just, you know, you're like, oh, thanks. This thing that has no purpose for me. Terrific. Let me save it, and we'll keep wandering around. Oh, here's a a party by the food drum. Ooh, wow. All right. Oh, somebody's over there that survived. This guy. Oh, actually, more than one. Okay. Ooh, a whole bunch of people. Well, holy cannoli. Uh... Aw, oh, did I run out? I did. Alright, can I get you with this? Oh! Fiddly D. I got, I got under railed. I, I forgot how to play, and I tried to use abilities and instead took a step forward and did nothing. Ah, uh, classic. Now, I got telekinetic punched. That's what I get. Alright, here. This is how you telekinetic punch people. I appreciate what you tried, though. And then this is, uh... Hopefully, yeah. Okay. Oh, somebody else is here. Oh, okay. Oh, they're coming out. All right. Here, you guys can have this one then. That was a named person. That was Vanga. Oh, Vanga's gone. Vanga got uh, treated by a well-placed orb hit. Let's bandage up. Let's get in stealth. Let's make this happen. What do we got? Ooh, lunatic poetry. Well, we've got all the poetry we could use. It seems unfair. That poetry should always be good. Do do do. Uh huh. Give me everything you got. Give me, give me. Money. Mind Shroom, sure, I'll take it all. Now, Vanya, are you the boss? Are you like the big boss? Do you have a figurine by any chance? No, but you do have a robe and some coal. Oh, your name is Frost. And you also don't seem to have a figurine, which is just a shame. I was really hoping that you did. Oh, there it is, the metal figurine. Yes, we got it. Jackpot. Anything good in here? Another coupon. Alright, let's save it. Let me go down here. Anybody in here? Nope. There's some shelves, though. And they have... Motor Cognitive Transference. Oh, this is a new thing that I don't have. Alright, I don't even know what that does, but, uh... Does it let me control people's movement? I don't know, but we got a new Psy ability, even at this stage of the game. How about that? Probably should have come here earlier. Anybody hanging out in here? Lock picking. Lock picking I can do. Bunch of traps all over the place. Hacking. Oh... Fiddle DD. All right, no problem. We'll just wait for the entanglement to end. I can't wait to see what's in here. Ten Karens. How about that? Well, everybody, we did it. We got ourselves the figurine, and we can use this to maybe ingratiate ourselves to those fine folk at the Institute of Short and get inside the front door. And we're going to do that. We're going to try that and see how much fun that is. And we'll get into that next time. Everyone, we cleared this place so easily. No deaths. Just walked in, shooting cryo, having a great time. And this was a lot of fun to feel strong. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. And we're going to get into that university and do some studying next time. Take care.